Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Maine Fish and Wildlife for a little more of our remote reading and reflection. We're going to read again today from a Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold, uh, and we're into the month of November now, so we're going to read a nice short story from uh, his chapter on the month of November. It's called If I Were the Wind, and uh, I love this one because this time of year, uh, I can totally connect with what he's writing about here. Spent a lot of time sitting in the woods and uh, thinking about the change of seasons and noticing these little signs, and he's going to talk about one of them right here. So hopefully at this point, you've opened up the reading uh, you know, in, I, in uh, iBooks somewhere to save it to be able to look back, and you've opened up the reflection assignment in Notability so that you can go in and write a nice little reflection uh, when we're done, and be sure to submit that thing uh, once you're all done for credit. So I'm going to stop throughout the reading here to you know, maybe explain and expand on some of the things he's talking about. Um, so just stick with me, follow along, we'll read this together. A nice short one uh, this month, but a really, really good one. And again, it's called If I Were the Wind. So here we go. The wind that makes music in November corn is in a hurry. The stalks hum, the loose husks whisk skyward in half-playful swirls, and the wind hurries on. In the marsh, long, windy waves surge across the grassy sloughs, beat against the far willows. A tree tries to argue, bare limbs waving, but there is no detaining the wind. On the sandbar, there is only wind, and the river sliding seaward. Every wisp of grass is drawing circles on the sand. I wander over the bar to a driftwood log where I sit and listen to the universal roar and to the twinkle of wavelets on the shore. The river is lifeless, not a duck, heron, marsh hawk, or gull, but has sought refuge from wind. And I, and I love his analogy there, that lifeless river. Uh, and sometimes the woods in November can feel lifeless because a lot of our birds and things like that have migrated and left. There's not a lot of animal sounds and not even a ton of creatures to observe and those uh, leafless trees. And all we have is the wind uh, on those windy November days wisping through the trees to listen to. Out of the clouds, I hear a faint bark as of a faraway dog. It is strange how the world cocks its ears at that sound, wondering. Soon it is louder, the honk of geese, invisible, but coming on. And I would imagine a lot of you guys have experienced that, that sound of an oncoming flock of geese. I absolutely love hearing those geese coming over the trees when I'm sitting in the woods, uh, or even lately out in the neighborhood in the evenings with my kids playing, hearing those geese coming over to roost back on the river. The flock emerges from the low clouds, a tattered banner of birds, dipping and rising, blown up and blown down, blown together and blown apart, but advancing. The wind wrestlingly, wrestling lovingly with each winnowing wing. When the flock is a blur in the far sky, I hear the last honk, sounding taps for summer. It is warm behind the driftwood now, for the wind has gone with the geese. So would I if I were the wind. So just a really interesting imagery he's creating in this story. It's kind of this lonesome feeling of this uh, lonely, windy day in November, and a flock of geese comes over. And my favorite analogy he creates here in this story is talking about that last honk of the goose as they leave, sounding taps for summer. And let's focus on that for a second. Let's talk about that song, Taps, which is uh, often uh, used at military funerals, and it's this really kind of uh, emotional song um, that... Uh, signifies the the end of a, of a life or the end of a season in the case of all the Leopold story here. So to just to jog your memory, take a listen. This is what he means when he's talking about taps, those geese sounding taps for summer. The song goes on there, but I think just hearing those opening notes uh, will jog our memory and get what he's what he means there when he talks about those geese sounding taps for summer. So um, really interesting, and to me, it is totally taps for summer. When I sit in those woods in early November, I might be up in my tree stand, or I might just be outside with my kids, and I hear those geese coming over. To me, it says one thing: uh oh, these big flocks of geese are on their way out of here. Winter is on its way, and uh, it's it's kind of that final that final song that lets us know 
that uh, summer has really come to an end. So uh, on our reflection today, not a lot of questions, just a quick reflection I want you to write. This is pretty straightforward. Three things I'm looking for you to do for me. And remember, these are worth about 33 points a piece, and um, I'm looking for us to write one cohesive paragraph that really ties these three things together. I'm not looking for a bulleted list. I'm looking for a nice um, you know, piece of writing that flows together. Number one, what was Leopold trying to make us feel or see in this passage? What, what was the feeling he was creating in his writing? Okay, how, what feelings were you getting as, as we read through there? Number two, how is the passing of a noisy flock of geese in November different from the same flock passing in April? Think about this. What do you, what do you think or what, what feeling do you get when you hear those geese flying by noisily in November, what would the difference be if you heard that same flock of geese coming back by in April? What's their, what's their mission? How has that changed? What would you maybe think when you, when you heard those two different things? There's, there's a different feeling, certainly, for geese in November and April. And then the last thing, and this is really uh, interesting to me because we all have this. Give me another example of a natural occurrence that could be considered sounding taps for summer. What's the thing that you see or hear in the natural world around you that immediately makes you say every year, oh, summer's over? I certainly have a few things that as I, as I uh, work at the farm in the summertime, I notice these subtle changes and I immediately go, uh-oh, summer's almost over. Tap, that's my taps for summer, right? That, that signal that summer may be ending. So it could be a certain sound you hear, colors you see, what's, in, what's an observance you make in nature that tells you summer uh, is coming to an end. And I want it to be a natural occurrence, not like school starting. That doesn't count. I'm talking about in nature, a thing you observe that lets you know that summer is almost over. And it can be very simple, but I want to hear what you have to say about that. So write me a nice little paragraph that ties those three things together uh, for full credit. And I look forward to seeing what you guys uh, work up for me this month with our uh, November reading and reflection. Thanks a lot for tuning in and make sure you get that assignment submitted by the end of the day.